chapter 9. God's creative power will work for you. The Great Confession. Christianity is called the Great Confession. But most Christians who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and confess the wrong things. They have spoken the words of the enemy, and those words hold them in bondage. Proverbs 6, 2 says, Thou art snared by the words of thy mouth. Faith-filled words will put you over. Fear-filled words will defeat you. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Their importance is seen from Genesis chapter 1. Let us make man in our image through revelations, which says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Revelations 12:11. God created the universe with the spoken word. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. Hebrews 11.3 In Genesis 1 is a copy of the words God used to release his faith. John 1, 1 through 3 tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It was the Word that was with God, and the Word was God. One of the laws of Genesis is that everything produces after His kind. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and fruit yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 1, 11 and 2. Then in Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28, we find three of the most astounding statements found in the Bible. Number one, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The number two statement, so God created man in his image. And the number three statement, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. John 4:24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Man was created in God's class, very capable of operating in the same kind of faith. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Genesis 2-7 tells us God made man's body out of the dust of the earth, but plainly states, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That life was spirit life, the very life of God. Man is a spirit being, very capable of operating on the same level of faith as God. We read in Mark 9, 23, where Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Matthew 17, 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Mark 11, 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Spiritual law. This is not theory. It's fact. It is spiritual law. It works every time it's applied correctly. God never does anything without saying it first. God is a faith God. God releases his faith in words. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Mark 11:22. A more literal translation of the above verse says, Have the faith of God, or faith, God kind of faith. Ephesians 5, 1 literally tells us to be imitators of God as children imitate their parents. To imitate God, you must talk like Him and act like Him. He would not ask you to do something that you're not capable of doing. Jesus operated in the faith principle of Mark 11:23 and Matthew 17:20 while He was on the earth. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the sea. He spoke to demons. He spoke to the fig tree. He even spoke to dead men. 
the wind, the sea, the trees, the demons, and even the dead were obedient to what Jesus said. He operated in the God kind of faith. God is a faith God. God releases his faith in words. Jesus was imitating his Father and getting the same results as his Father. In John 14, 12, Jesus said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater. These principles of faith are based on spiritual laws. They work for whosoever will apply these laws. You set them in motion by the words of your mouth. That's the way you were saved, by confessing Jesus as Lord. Because the Word says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Faith-filled words released out of your mouth defeat Satan and create the reality of God's Word in your spirit. Speaking God's Word after him caused you to become a new creation that never existed before. Jesus said, He shall have whatsoever he saith. It wouldn't happen just because you said it. You must release faith in the words you speak from the heart. You must believe that those things which you are saying will come to pass. This law is working for or against you every day. Do you really want all the negative things you've been confessing to come to pass? Are you believing for those things? If Jesus came to you personally and said, From this day forward, it will come to pass that everything you say will happen exactly as you say it, would that change your vocabulary? I believe it would. Binding and loosing. In Matthew 16:19, Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Psalms 119 and 89 tells us, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. What God said is already established. Now it's up to you. What are you going to say about it? God will not alter the things he said. Psalms 89 and 34 tells us, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. Whose words will you establish on the earth? The power of binding and loosing is on earth. It's not in heaven. According to Matthew 16, 19, you are the one doing the binding. He said, all heaven will stand behind what you say. Many Christians have bound their finances and loosed the enemy by the words of their mouth. They have bound their spiritual growth by confessing the enemy's ability to hinder them. They have more faith in the enemy to defeat them than they have in God to put them over. And there is no scriptural basis for that kind of belief, or should I say, unbelief. World overcomer. The Word says that he that is born of God overcometh the world. 1 John 5, 4. You are a world overcomer. Confess it right now. I am a world overcomer because I am born of God. I am a world overcomer because I am born of God. We ought to say it again and again. You may not feel like it. The Word didn't say you were if you felt like it. God's Word said you were. How you feel has nothing to do with God being truthful. If He said it, if He said, I'm a world overcomer, then thank God that's good enough for me. I'm not a world overcomer because of how I feel or how I look. I don't always feel like one. I don't always look like one. But thank God, because he said I am, I am a world overcomer, and I confess it daily. It's true, and I know it, but I confessed it aloud before God the Father, Jesus, the angels, before demons, and anyone else who would listen for months before I began to feel like it was true. The feeling came only after my spirit received God's Word as the final authority. God's Word said it. Then whether I feel like it or not, God cannot lie. Spoken words. Words spoken program your spirit or heart either to success or defeat. Words are containers. They carry faith or fear, and they produce after their kind. 
So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, as Romans 10, 17 says. Faith comes more quickly when you hear yourself quoting, speaking, saying the things that God said. You will more readily receive God's word into your spirit by hearing yourself saying it than if you hear someone else say it. Live in the authority of the word. The Spirit of God spoke to me concerning confessing the word of God aloud, where you can hear yourself saying it. He said to me, it is a scientific application of the wisdom of God to the psychological makeup of man. And it works, thank God. The body of Christ must begin to live in the authority of the Word, for God's Word is creative power. That creative power is produced by the heart, formed by the tongue, and released out of the mouth in word form. In August of 1973, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, If men would believe me, long prayers are not necessary. Just speaking the word will bring what you desire. My creative power is given to men in word form. I have ceased for a time from my work and have given men the book of my creative power. That power is still in my word. But for it to be effective, men must speak it in faith. Jesus spoke it when he was on earth, and it worked then, so shall it work now. But it must be spoken by the body. Man must rise up and have dominion over the power of evil by my word. It is my greatest desire that my people create a better life by the spoken word. For my word has not lost its power just because it was spoken once. It is still equally as powerful today as when I said, Let there be light. But for my word to be effective, men must speak it. And that creative power will come forth performing that which is spoken in faith. My word is not void of power. My people are void of speech. They hear the world. They speak as the world speaks. By observing circumstances, they have lost sight of my word. They even speak that which the enemy says, and they destroy their own inheritance by corrupt communication of fear and unbelief. No word of mine is void of power, only powerless when it is unspoken. As there is creative power in my spoken word, so is there evil power present in the words of the enemy to afflict and oppress every one that speaks them. Be not conformed, but be ye transformed into the body of faith, knowing that my words are alive evermore. Believe, speak, obtain, that your joy may be full, and you shall be complete in me." Now, he spoke that to me in August of 1973, and these truths changed my life. I've never been the same since. You'll never be the same after learning the faith principles of Mark 11, 23, 24, and Matthew 17, 20, and Psalms 107 and 2. Your confession will come into line with the Word of God. You will have learned to release the ability of God within you by the spoken word. Learn to confess victory in the face of apparent defeat. Confess abundance in the face of apparent lack. Even as you read this, there may seem to be pressing needs, but my God is able, and he will deliver you. He will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, which is the Word of God. In September of 1973, the Lord spoke to me concerning a teaching ministry. He said to me, Teach my people how to make my creative power work for them. Then June of 1974, I was teaching a faith seminar in Hickory, North Carolina. My text was taken from Mark 11:23. The word of the Lord came unto me as I was teaching and spoke one of the most profound statements that I ever heard. It was very simple, but when Jesus spoke, he never did make anything hard to understand. It's so simple that it almost seems foolish, but it has changed many lives. It'll change your life as you receive it. Let's put it in the context 
of that which he spoke. Mark 11:23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. As I was teaching from this text, Jesus said to me, I have told my people they can have what they say, and they are, my people, are saying what they have. Now, I'll say that again. He said to me, I have told my people they can have what they say, and he says, my people are saying what they have. Now, that's a very simple truth, but oh, how profound and far-reaching. For as long as you say what you have, you will have what you say. Then you again say what you have, and it will produce no more than what you say. You can see that you have set in a spiritual law in motion that will continue to work and confine you to the very position of our circumstances you find yourself in when you set the law in motion. It is an age-old problem of not looking beyond what you can see with the physical eye. The things that are seen are temporal. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The word temporal means subject to change. The circumstances of life, your position in life, the problems you face in life are very real to you because you see them. You feel them. You hear them, but thank God, the very fact that you can see and touch them means they're subject to change. A correct application of this spiritual law will change even the most impossible situation. But to incorrectly apply this law will hold you in bondage and cause the circumstance to grow worse. Every faith principle, every spiritual law that God set forth in his word was for your benefit. It was designed to put you over in life. It was not designed to hold you back or to put you in bondage. But just as Satan has perverted nature to cause storms, floods, destruction, so has he set out to pervert the law of God, or God's word, in the minds and the hearts of God's people to point to the point where it looks as though God is the author of poverty, sickness, and the problems of life. The truth is, In so many cases, the deception of Satan that has caused an incorrect application of certain spiritual laws that defeated so many at the game of life. God's Word is spiritual law. God's Word always works, but the same law can work for or against you depending on how you apply it. Sometimes people will start confessing that they will not have enough money to make the payment on their house three months before they're due. They continue to confess lack and inability to obtain the money several times a day until the day finally arrives. Then they proudly announce through tears of self-pity, See, I told you we couldn't make the payments. We never have enough money to go around. I can't understand why the people next door prosper in their wickedness. If you were to listen to the wicked people next door, you would hear a different confession. Daily, they probably confess and believe in prosperity. They talk prosperity. They live it. Wicked? Yes. But they believe that what they do will prosper. They build a faith image inside themselves by the words they speak. Many Christians who hear them think that they are just bragging when they are simply believing in prosperity and practicing it. Jesus himself said the children of the world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. Wicked, yes, but God is no respecter of person. They have learned the power of words. Many of them don't know what makes it work. They just know it works. They practice it. It's spiritual law. Learn to release your faith in words. You can have what you say if you learn to release faith from the heart in your words. Jesus said in Matthew 8:13, "As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee." He didn't say it would only work for you if you believed right. Whether you believe right or wrong, it's still a law. God is not mocked, but whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
The spiritual law is based on the same basic principle of seed time and harvest. The words you speak are seeds that produce after their kind. Just as sure as they are planted, you can be equally sure a harvest will follow. Faith as a seed. In Luke chapter 17, verse 6, the Bible says, And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. We find in the above scripture that Jesus spoke of a seed that was so full of faith that it would speak. The apostles had asked him to give them more faith. Jesus didn't indicate they needed more faith. In so many words, he said, you don't need more faith. You need to sow the seed you already have. Jesus told two great secrets in verse 6. Number one, faith is a seed. Number two, the way you plant a seed of faith is to say it. Faith talks. And when faith talks, faith talks faith, not fear and unbelief. Jesus said your faith would speak to the object or the sycamine tree, and it should obey you. Now let's bring this into focus. It, poverty, should obey you. You said, we don't have enough money. We will never be able to meet the payments. And it, poverty, followed you home. You sneezed and said, I'm taking a coal. And it, the coal, was obedient to your words. And the virus fastened itself upon your body. You said, I can't remember anything anymore. And it, your memory, became obedient to your words. You said, my nerves are on edge. And it, your nerves, became obedient because Jesus said, it should obey you. Then again we find the words of Jesus. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Jesus did not say God would move the mountain. That mustard seed has faith in the ability that resides on the inside of it, not in the hull that surrounds it. Jesus said, If you have faith in the ability of he that is inside you, you shall say, Remove, and it, the mountain, or the object, shall remove. Faith is the voice of authority. These things know the voice of authority. Your faith is your voice of authority. Be careful what you authorize things to do. Jesus said you can have what you say, and many have prophesied defeat month after month until the harvest time finally came, and it was true to the law of Genesis. Defeat, lack, inability was harvested in abundance. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I know a family who planned a trip abroad. But several weeks before they were to leave, the lady began to sow seed by the word of her mouth. She told several people on different occasions, I know exactly what will happen. The day we are ready to leave, my kids will come down sick. The very day they were to leave, the harvest came. Her boy was sick. She was heard to proclaim very proudly, I knew it would happen. I have said all along, the day when we leave, my kids will get sick. The fruit of her mouth had won out again, and she was rather pleased that she had been able to prophesy it several weeks in advance. A man shall be satisfied with good but the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Proverbs 12:14. Proverbs 16.30 says, He shutteth his eyes to divine forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The words of Jesus somehow seem to fit here. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and the evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. Notice who brought them forth, men and not God. 
The treasures of the heart cannot be hidden, but are manifest through words. Learn to take the words of Jesus personally. Mark 11:23. Jesus tells you that you can have what you say if what you say comes from faith in your heart. What would happen if Jesus walked down the aisles of your church, laid his hands on people, and said, It'll come to pass that after I have laid my hands on each one of you, everything you say will happen just as you say it. Half the congregation would jump up and say, Ooh, that tickles me to death. And you would be two weeks burying the dead. The enemy has so programmed the minds of people until, instead of resisting him, they have just sort of butted up with him and began to talk his language. Train yourself to speak God's word. Let us train ourselves to speak God's word effectively. Ephesians 5, 1 tells us to be followers of God as dear children. The word followers in the Greek means to imitate. We are to imitate God as a child does his father. If a child imitates his father, he will walk like him, he will talk like him, and pattern his every move after him. We should do no less after our father, God. Jesus said, I do that which I see my father do in John 5:19. He said, His father hath given him a commandment, what he should speak. Let's read it out of the Amplified Version of the Bible, John twelve forty seven through 50. If anyone hears my teaching and fails to observe them, does not keep them, but disregards them, it is not I who judges him, for I have not come to judge and to condemn, to pass sentence and to inflict penalty on the world, but to save the world. Anyone who rejects me and persistently sets me at naught, refusing to accept my teaching, has his judge, however, for the very message that I have spoken will itself judge and convict him on the last day. This is because I have never spoken of my own authority or my own accord or self-appointed, but the Father who has sent me has himself given me orders what to say and what to tell. And I know that his commandment, that is, means eternal life, so whatever I speak, I am saying exactly what my Father has told me to say and in accordance with His instructions. I'll paraphrase the above scripture. Jesus said, The Father gave me instructions what I should say, and those words spoken would produce life, and whatever I speak is exactly what the Father said. When you study the life of Jesus, you find several important facts that cause Him to caused him to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. I will list a few. Number one, he spent much time in prayer, but he never prayed the problem. He prayed the answer. What God said is the answer. Number two, he spoke accurately, never crooked speech. His conversation always consisted of what God said. Number three, he always spoke the end results, not the problem. Never. Did he confess present circumstances? He spoke the desired results. Number four, he used the written word to defeat Satan. For example, in Matthew 4, verse 3 through 11, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Then as we go on down, it says, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Satan left only after Jesus said, Get thee hence. Number five, Jesus always spoke directly to the problem, such as trees, storms, waves, demons, and Satan, and they all obeyed him. Contrary to what most of us have thought, they did not obey Jesus because he was the Son of God, but because he was the Son of Man. John five twenty six and 27 tells us, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Not because he's the Son of God, 
but because he is the Son of Man. He operated as a man on the authority of his Father's Word. Don't misunderstand. He was the Son of God, but he operated as the Son of Man. People who are born on this earth are the ones who have authority here. That is why God works through men. Jesus knew how to operate in the authority of God's Word. It stands out very vividly in Matthew 4, 10 and 11, where he said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Then the devil leaveth him. He, the devil, will leave you as quickly as he did Jesus when you speak boldly the written word. The word of God, conceived in the heart, formed by the tongue, and spoken out of the mouth, is creative power. The spoken word will work for you as you continue to confess it.